Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct News, Sam I.B. Beganji doing political commentary for the Media Speaks. You might know me from Wits News, Blasting News, Teddy Stick, Conservative Daily Post. I was there for quite some time. <clears throat> well, it's that time of year. It's the time of year when uh, we, we, we look at some of the very obvious things, I think, that so many people haven't looked at maybe the way you do or the way I do. What am I talking about? Um... Earlier in the year, there was a, a a thread going along on Facebook that Maynard from Tool, the singer, had raped a 17-year-old girl while on tour with Nine Inch Nails. Now, I went to that Nine Inch Nails show. It was in Columbus when I went, and um, that was a very long time ago. It, I found it strange that just out of nowhere this happened to pop up. I'm always leery of those. You know, I it, many people have argued with me about this. I respect your view, uh, but I'm leery of those that have taken forever to come up. Um, having said that, <clears throat> I was attacked online by some nameless hoe, and she was having an absolute aneurysm by the fact that I said that a person should have a trial before their career is ruined. You would not believe the amount of grief and hardship that a person can get for having that point of view. And I think to some degree, um, we're seeing that now with Kevin Spacey. Now, I noticed like overnight the accusations vanished. So did, uh, did Maynard pay her off? Did she just go away because she was lying? Was she telling the truth? And nobody listened to her. Those are all options. I mean, I'll be honest. I happen to dislike uh, Tool not because of any accusation that somebody has necessarily made against Maynard. I'm not into his... He's got this amazing band, and the way they write is, is, is definitely unique to them, perhaps a bit overly repetitive. They're kind of a one-trick pony with Tool. But just the same, it's a rather amazing trick. Uh, that said, I think Maynard, many instances, comes out with these ridiculous, stupid quotes about sex with God or something equally dumb, just to try to get attention. And it takes away from the music. So I'm not here to preach the gospel of Maynard by any stretch of the imagination at all. I think he shocks because he lacks real talent in some areas. Maybe somebody else should write the lyrics. I mean, that's my honest opinion. But, you know, now the whole Kevin Spacey thing has come out, and then he made the video in character, <clears throat> pretty much saying, should a person lose their careers, everything that they've worked for, without a trial? Do people deserve a trial before their careers are ruined? For all the jokes that exist for saying, lock her up, lock her up, with Hillary Clinton, what most people want is her to be tried, for her to face a trial. Now let me take this one step further. <clears throat> if Kevin Spacey can lose his career, and again, I think he's kind of a weird guy, he may have done what, what they said he did, and he probably, should, you know, needs to have a speedy trial, not one that drags on forever ample time for everyone to, to get their evidence together. I think there should be a trial. I think that should happen before somebody loses their career. Now with politicians, I get that's a bit harder because things happen so rapidly. And I, I do wonder, I do appreciate that. But we see it all the time. It happened to, uh, what was his name? The, the, the host on Fox, O'Reilly. There was no trial. Where was the trial? Now, you know, again, Kevin Spacey knocked off his television show and the laughing stock of the internet while proclaiming his innocence. Now, if he was out there blubbering, saying how sorry he was, I would say, fine, it is now time for the sentencing phase for what you have done. But if someone's asking for a trial and proclaiming their innocence, I 
don't think we need to run to condemn someone. Why? Because here is what they are doing. And this is why you tune into the show. And this is why you hit subscribe and hit share. And God, I hope you do. And buy the t-shirts, which are now available. You can see in the comment line from Bonfire. Take things one step further here. They're setting it up so that any accusation can be used against anyone. Well, it happened to Kevin Spacey. Oh, it happened. It tried to happen to Tool. It's happened to a number of people. It happened to O'Reilly. Okay, then it can, it can happen to anyone. You can make accusations against anyone and utterly destroy their careers, in which case you can eliminate those <clears throat> who speak out against you. You can eliminate the views and the thoughts of people who are speaking truth, which you don't want released. That's not to say that Kevin Spacey is innocent. He's a placeholder in this. The fact that he's very likely guilty makes it even worse. See, we accused this guy, and he was guilty, and we fired him, and we should have. Now we can accuse whoever. Oh, yeah, and by the way, you're fired. I'll see how that works. So you can use this as an arrow, this, this line of thinking, this, this we don't need a trial before ruining someone mindset to move right on in to destroying the careers of anyone we don't like, particularly if we are powerful enough to make the accusation stand. That is why I think, you know, again, we don't need to ignore the victims here. That's, that's not a solution to anything. However, to go marching boldly in to shatter the life of someone for an accusation is a very, very dangerous thing to do. We're all, I mean, I, I lived part of this when Facebook was going after supposed ad farms. They said that the 800 pages that they shut down, they didn't belong to real people. Remember that? <clears throat> I was making twenty-five to twenty-eight thousand dollars a year from the conservative Daily Post and Teddy Stick. They were not ad farms. They were a legitimate company that Argus Media. They legit printed legitimate news and opinion pieces. Called for no violence, broke no rules. Facebook took thousands, an untold thousands, in advertising and then shut the page down, accusing them of being ad farms. Any proof? No. 20-some people lost their jobs. It all ties into this entire, this entire thing of being able to accuse someone, being able to point the finger at someone, and that person then automatically being demonized to the point where they don't get a say. Hello, Dave, Steve, and Matt. All are automatically. Dangerous things. That's very, very dangerous. Um, what else did I want to get to? Well, of course, there is the issue of Mr. Trump. Have you noticed that Donald Trump has done pretty much everything recently that Democrats have wanted? And, I, and there's a method to this, and I'm going to tell you what it is. Um, there is a large part of Donald Trump that is liberal. And that has, and it's, it's the part of him that I agree with in some ways the most. I'm pretty much a social liberal. I'm a libertarian Christian. But I am a social libertarian. We don't need to be telling other people what they must do. If you think you know what is best, then your job is to go ahead and do something, grab a camcorder, if you will, and record. And protest, write letters, do whatever it is that you're good at doing and do it. That is fine. But we don't need to go policing what people do, if someone smokes pot or not, if somebody watches porn or not. That is between them and God. We don't need to taxing people for sins. The only person that holds people accountable for sins is God. So, and if you don't believe in God, that's fine, but you sure don't want it to be the state. Amen? Does anybody hear me on that? Okay, so what's Trump done? Well, and then we're here, we're going to go into our dumb D of the day music. Uh, the the, the dunce cap of the month will probably be next weekend. But let's get our you are an idiot music going. All right. The idiots go to all of the people on the left who are, they're helping Trump here. And I'll tell you what. 
Trump is doing these things now. The things that are on the, he's not denying who he was. He's always said he was going to do these things. But he's doing them now specifically so that a whole bunch of things that people on the left have wanted are being done. And in their fervent hatred for him, as they take over the house, they are arguing against things that they have always wanted, which have now happened thanks to him. What am I talking about? When did war, endless war, not only become normal in this country, but when did Democrats come out in favor of it? Donald Trump has pulled our forces out of the Middle East and stopped the meddling. It is not the job of America to police the damn world any more than it is the job of America to let everybody into the country without us knowing whether or not they're child smugglers, killers, or otherwise dangerous. When did Democrats come out against pulling troops out of the Middle East? We're not helping there. We've been there to some degree, since I was in high school, but hardcore since the 9-11 attacks. And what do we have to show for it? Nothing. ISIS has been defeated between the United States, Russia, Israel, and some Arab nations, and the rest of the fighting is to be solved by them. Yes, there is still an ISIS, but they're not big enough that the local governments there now in the Middle East cannot handle it. America is no longer needed. ISIS is no longer a huge threat. Why are Democrats against it? Because they're against anything that Donald Trump does, even if it's exactly what they want. And he, God willing, is going to use this very, very wisely. Do you know that <coughs> he legalized hemp, which is wonderful, by the way. He legalized hemp. They can make clothing out of it. Non-THC hemp. He's legalized hemp. You know who didn't want that? Big business. Big business didn't want them. Oh, but Donald Trump comes out on the side of big business. Big business didn't want hemp because hemp is so much more productive than cotton. It's not even funny. It's been demonized because of its connection to marijuana. Trump legalized non-THC hemp for clothing. This has been wanted by every libertarian and liberal from here to Zimbabwe. Now, I'm not attacking the libertarians because many of them, including Ron Paul, Rand Paul, other people did praise him. So I'm not going to attack the libertarians here because they're with me. Liberals, what the hell is wrong with you? You've wanted this forever. The man, if you believe in the global warming scam, which neither I nor Mr. Trump do, hemp is much better for the environment than cotton. It lasts longer once it's purchased. What is wrong with you? Trump did it, that's why. Think about this. The man has taken the troops out of the Middle East where they're not needed. Not all of them, but you know what I'm saying. And he has legalized hemp. Now, for those of you, those of you that want to tie it to marijuana use, he's allowing states to decide this marijuana issue themselves. And you know what the Constitution says? It says that that <clears throat> which isn't outlined in the Constitution as a role of the federal government, which is a very low number of things, those things are to be decided by the states. Therefore, Donald Trump has proven to be quite a constitutionalist. So that leads me to my prediction of the, uh, of the impeachment. I think there is a chance that he will be impeached only because uh, America foolishly allowed the left to take over Congress, or had the House, excuse me. We held the Senate, um, conservatives, libertarians, Republicans. Um, does that mean I agree with every Republican? No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a very random Polish, uh, usually just an Amish libertarian, although uh, not when it comes to the wall, but we don't agree on everything. My prediction, yes. My prediction is that the impeachment, if followed through with, which is likely, won't produce anything. I don't believe there was collusion. 
And I think that this coming forward will prove it if they decide to do so. Um, if they don't, I also give you the reason why. The reason why is that Democrats are the ones who have been tied into amazing amounts of greed. You can see this in the DNC report in the way that they used Christopher Steele, a former British agent, as a, they paid him a lot of money to put together a very fraudulent dossier that has still been used by people with an agenda to this day as if it was factual. And you can look up with very great ease, great amounts of ease here that it, it's not factual. It's been disproven time and time again. Even leftists don't stand behind it anymore. Brazil is hiding from it. Done the best she could to warn everyone with her book. So the reason, uh, if it doesn't go forward, well, it won't be because the Democrats have suddenly seen the light, but it will be because to do so would be to expose how they were the ones colluding. Um, thank you for listening, friends. Happy New Year. With my hours, this will probably be my last posting of the year for the show. So thank you for hitting subscribe and hitting share. Please donate at the correct use at hotmail.com. You can do so through PayPal. And lastly, you can now get shirts at Bonfire. Yeah, bonfire. I've got the shirts that say, use the thinking part of your brain, which is sort of the slogan for the show. And uh, the other one in great big bold letters says, F you, Mark Zuckerberg at Facebook, Google, YouTube, Monsanto, and the United Nations. Who wouldn't want that shirt? You can get either one, friends, at bonfire. Please do so. Good night. God bless. And if you're spending New Year's with someone who loves you, hold them dearly. Hold them close. Let them know that you really care.